Okay, you guys stay there. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Minecraft. Before we got started today, I wanted to- Oh, sorry. <laughs> he was excited by my uh, go on carrot. I just wanted to make sure that I had some pigs over here. In case in all of my shenanigans, I lose them. But pigs aren't the only thing we're going to want to get over in this area. We do have some cows and sheep. I want chickens. And maybe we also go look for some llamas, some donkeys, and all sorts of different creatures and try and get all of them in this area. But if we're going to be doing that, we need to do a little bit of terraforming, a little bit of building, making some spaces for them to sit and live comfortably. So in today's episode, we're going to, uh, oh, that's a nice view from this side. Hmm. Uh, we're going to do a bunch of stuff around this area to continue our efforts of making an animal section of this build of this area so i'm going to gather some resources and we're going to see what we can get up to i think we might remove some of this though at least that one there the fishery or the future fishery i think i like the idea of this just being a little bit of a fishing house sitting up on the edge of the uh, the river that goes between the two so i'm going to leave that there but we might remove this one here and that one there, so that we can have some room for some terraforming and make something interesting happen. So how about I gather some resources, remove those two, and we start planning out a few things. Yeah. All right, let's make a little workstation. I have a little bit left over from when I was working on this. The coarse dirt and stuff might be nice to use, but realistically, I've just gone and grabbed some stone, some grass and just some plain dirt so that we can do some very basic terraforming. And to get started with, I'm going to grab a decent bit of this stone and we're going to start marking some stuff out. Oh, you and you and you. Yeah. Oh, you survived? Better. So... I think I want to continue this height here across to the edge of our river over there, making a sort of natural wall a little bit like what we have over here and turning this into more of a sunken out area. So a very basic start to getting that sorted is to just come across and place down a bit of a line. Now I'm going to duck in a little bit towards here where I have that pathway coming down because I have a little bit of an idea in my head. I'm going to make a gap where that pathway would come through about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven across. That seems good. And then I'm going to bring it backwards over this direction towards my fishery. I'm just going to be calling this the fishery for now. <laughs> it's uh, the easiest way I can identify it. So across like that. We're going to have to remove this tree and then I'm going to come sort of across to where we finished up this. I sort of left this in the past as a, oh, I will continue or work out how I want to finish it later. And I feel like this is probably the perfect opportunity to tie into previous ideas and use that to my advantage. So we're going to come across like that. And I'm just going to cut this back. We're going to do a similar thing on an angle like this. And now we can make it so that this, whatever this building ends up being, is slightly tucked into the side of a hill of sorts, I suppose. We'll bring it up around there. And I'm just going to give it a ever so slight bit of elevation back this way. I decided I want to bring you guys in for a bit of a live demonstration of the thinking process as I'm going. So, this way we are continuing the line of this hill. We'll adjust this slightly so that it has some extra cliffiness. As to make it a natural barrier from stopping animals from getting out. And then, not even planned, but just using the aspect of what was already there. I realized that I have this path coming down here, which was meeting up with the one through the center. But I feel like it could be a fun way to come up here, maybe even slightly higher so that it gives some interest. And we bring this path up across 
and have like an arching bridge that becomes an archway you walk underneath of. So we'll have some natural cliff walls that you walk through and then a little bit of a bridge bridging these two spaces. Let me get some wireframing in. Okay, something like that. Very basic, but uh, a little bit of a shape to work with. This terraforming is so much smaller than the scale of this, so it's going to be very easy to get done quite quickly. Now, what I think I will do is set myself up with a bit of a tripod. So, with the free cam mod, which is pretty widely used now, it is pretty standard. If you're going to get a free cam, you get the one that I have. I will just double check what it is called. I'm pretty sure it's just called Freecam by Hashlight. Uh, there is fabric versions. There are ones for Forge, I believe, as well. And uh, if you get the Modrith version, it won't allow you to go through the world like this, but the Curse Forge version will. Uh, but what you can do is if you hold down, for me, it's F4 to go into Freecam mode. But if I hold it and press one of my number keys, for example, F4 one, it brings me back over to this. You can see it says closing camera one. So I can go into my normal free cam by pressing F4, or I can press and hold F4 and press one, and it opens up that same spot again. So we can keep a nice consistent view of this as I work, which is very, very helpful. Uh, sleepy time. Ah. Ow. So with, uh, with that set up there, we can get a better idea of the overall height over here by doing this. And I can see the shape of my little wall that I've made and how that's going to enclose this in. And now I think I'm going to start setting up some lines on the ground that are going to be my natural walls. And by natural walls, I mean a kind of combination between stone and cobble and bits and pieces and then fences and stuff to make animal pens. So we're going to kind of just do some stuff like this, almost like I'm setting out for the base of some terraforming, but instead I'm coming across and just dividing this up into sections. Now, excuse the sheep noises. We're going to come across here. We're gonna have to deal with those at some point. And I'm gonna put one like that. So one of the uh, groups gets this watering hole. We'll make sure that each little area has a bit of a watering hole so that they can uh, they can drink. But next, I'm going to split off of this one and come across like so. And we're going to give a nice wide area. Not too worried about inconsistencies in what I'm placing. This is very much a guideline. So we're going to come across like this. And bring it across to probably right along the edge of a little tower or a place where you can uh, walk up. I don't know whether I'm just going to do a tower with a spiral staircase in the middle, or whether I'm going to do some form of stairs going up. But from down here, you get a bit of an idea. Let's just put that in there. But if I go to my free cam, there we go. We're starting to split this up into sections. So we have two there. I think maybe we could get another one across this way and have three entries in this spot. That's why it's nice to have a little bit of a bird's eye view. Now I understand not everyone's gonna be able to do that. It's not so simple for most folks to just grab mods or you may be on bedrock. So I completely understand it is not as efficient, but of course you could build a pillar up and go fly over to that pillar with your elytra and double check from a bit of a vantage point as you go. There are ways around it. But obviously with some mods, it makes content creation and also showing off ideas a lot nicer. Okay, so we have a little bit there, a little one there around the pond, and one over here as well. It's actually kind of tempting now that I have this in to, rather than making one around the pond, actually make this a little bit of a walkway through the lot of it to access the water and make this a pretty little spot. So we'll keep this as a pen field. I really need to work on my terminology. And this one over here too. Now horses and donkeys and stuff, I will probably keep in the stables. So right now I'm focusing on the three OGs being the sheep, the cows, and probably, like I said, the, uh, the piggies. Now, I'm still not 100% convinced on building a special forest out here just yet. 
at least not in this episode, that might be something we use as a way to practice our custom trees. So for now, I think I'm going to give myself a little bit of a space over here and bring it back into the wall there. And of course, to stop them from going down into the pits, <laughs> we'll, just, uh, we'll just do a natural little wall through here. My aim is to try to keep this as natural landscape looking as possible, but uh, avoid having places like this where they could just climb and climb and climb and climb and eventually make their way out. So I'm going to have to adjust some of the base stuff <laughs> to be sure that, uh, yeah, there, there's no escape. It sounds bad, but you know what I mean. We're trying to keep our animals accessible for future reasons. So we have one field there, which will probably be for the sheep. It makes sense to just keep them in there. I think this little bit here for some cows and a little one over here. It looks quite small, but we might dig into the wall a little bit and uh, make this for the pigs. We have a fair bit of space open in the middle here, but it might be nice to hmm, maybe continue that water because it is a little bit higher. I could bring this, have that as a bit of a pond and bring some water down to further have some down here and trickle it somewhere else. Hmm. I want to be sure that it keeps kind of realistic, but maybe we just mark this out for some pondage. <laughs> yeah, that way we kind of uh, narrow down the area a bit and have some areas for pathing to go between here and around the whole business. I might bring a bit of a river through here and put a bridge over the middle, much like I've done up there. It's starting to come together in my head. So cliff faces to make a natural wall and walkway through into this area. Some pens with a mixture of stone and wooden structure that is going to allow us to have some walls and keep the animals in. A continuation of this spring of water that comes out from the mountains probably and brings it across down here for the water wheel into here, make some water flow down into this space. We could make that a bit bigger actually. And mm, I'll think about it. That could be the final resting place of, uh, of the water. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do some adjustment. Oh, I just moved my tripod, but that actually works out okay. So that's a little bit of some planning done. And now you've been brought into a bit of the decision making and the process of which I set myself up to do this terraforming work. I think we're going to pop into a nice time lapse now, do some building, probably on a live stream over on Twitch. And that's a nice place to actually shout myself out and say, if uh, you do want to see some of the mountain works happening, I'm probably going to be doing a bunch of streams upcoming on Twitch where I just place a bunch of stones. So if you want to come hang out and, uh, and just chat with me while I'm doing that, I do stream on there a couple of times a week and probably going to be doing a bunch of the Let's Play or the vanilla Let's Play stuff over there because these projects are so big. It makes sense to do a few streams and hang out with you guys while I do it. But with that little self promo out of the way, I think I'm going to pop into this time lapse. We're going to build ourselves an animal sanctuary. <laughs> it's not really a sanctuary, but a place for storing our animals. See if I can get it so that they are nice and safe. And then maybe we go search for some llamas and get our chickens in and bits and pieces before the end of the episode. Yeah, cool. Feels good to have this planned out. Hope you enjoyed that little bit of planning. Let's get into the time lapse. Yeah. I'm actually going to cut that time lapse a little bit short and more to the point, the build a little bit short before I get over to doing things like that. 
because I'm not 100% convinced that I want that area there. And I feel like I could spend a bit more time uh, thinking about what works here. But first of all, have a look at this tree idea. Something I saw on TikTok before. I can't remember the original creator, but uh, if I do, I'll make sure to put it in the description. But uh, I remember that from months and months ago, and I wanted to try it always. And it's, it's kind of cool. I think it looks nice. Very interesting little way of making a bit of a tree trunk. But now we have these areas, which I believe I've kind of gone back and forth looking at the inside of them. Uh, I think they shouldn't be able to get out of here. Oh, that's fine. Uh, it's, it's fine. Hold on. I gotta sleep anyway. I'm heading that way anyway. One of these and one of these. Yeah, there's like nowhere they can get out, you know? So, <laughs> so I think we're fine. Uh, well, um, hmm. Nowhere at all that they can get out. Uh, look, we'll get there and we'll test it out. If, uh, if one does happen to start getting out, then we can probably fix that up pretty quickly. That's fine. Anyway, something like that seems to be okay. Most of this... Their AI would have to be pretty smart, which let's be honest, they're not that smart to get out of here. But if they do brute force their way out, we'll, uh, we'll deal with that when we come to it. But I've got these little areas now where I can put my animals. We have ourselves a bit of a river coming down to more of a lake in the middle. And once again, this is something that I would like to spend a bit more time uh, decorating and making sure that it feels a little bit more detailed and that these pathways are better as well. That's why I was going through and just adding little bits like this, just to give it some texture and whatnot. I'm also not 100% convinced about this whole thing here. It's not too bad. I think what's really ruining it for me is just how flat and bland this looks. So maybe just giving it some grass might help and putting a tree up here or some other details eventually will make a difference. I need to start looking at everything as more of a work in progress and not judging myself on what I can achieve in one little go. See, this isn't bad. It's, it's okay. <laughs> it, just, it just needs a little bit of extra love. And that's going to happen over time. This section looks pretty good. I don't mind that at all. So, let's, uh, let's see. Give me that. All of those. If we grab these guys and come across here. Will you come through this gate? Doop, doop, do. There we go. Close that and grab my leads back. And hopefully these guys will stay in here. And I'm just going to fly out. I'm also going to grab them. Uh, I'm sure I have. There it is. They need some hay, surely. Yeah. <laughs> Do -do 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 -do. Okay, but I think what's actually really happened in the end is I've come into a little bit of builder's block, and that does happen occasionally. Regardless of what I designed and talked about at the start of the episode, when it comes to implementing that and turning that into reality, it's not always as easy as you first assume. I'm just going to grab some of this, put away some of that. Oh, it's raining. Perfect. <laughs> Let's, uh release the beasts. We may need to cull the herd slightly. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, we just, uh, we wait for them to work stuff out. That's fine. Now they can't get out. Uh, you can go free. <laughs> so, we got heaps of sheep wandering around now. Oh, I just noticed another spot where they will get out. I obviously didn't complete my wall there and we're just gonna go like this just to make sure it's a bit rough work in progress work in progress i sort of was sitting here worrying that you guys would be disappointed in me for not completing the entire planned area but at the same time this is quite a few hours of work this is a decent bit of time especially when I started to get a little bit blocked for what to do and kept pushing through, trying to improvise and make something happen. So I shouldn't be too hard on myself. I think maybe it would be nice to do some more rockiness around this and have the water running through rock 
rather than through dirt. Give this some extra detail and whatnot around here. Could be kind of nice. But like I said before, it's more something that might be delegated over to the live streams. Maybe now that we're reaching this scale, this size of things in the world, if I feel like it, I can just pop onto a live stream and add detail to these areas and ask the advice of you guys and see what you think. Ask questions, brainstorm some things in certain areas and see what looks nice. Yeah. All in all though, with a bit of detailing, a little bit more density of items, I think this will turn out just nicely. One thing that I did realize I really needed was a moss farm. I had to go back to spawn during the live stream where I did most of this and I had to go collect some from a cave. I think that might be an indication that it is about time we get uh, a little farm up and running and feeding our storage over in here. Air yeah, swoop. I have a whole silo here that's ready to go and be filled up with the moss, but I don't have a moss farm and it really wouldn't be that difficult to, oh, I don't know, pop a little room back here somewhere and build one. It could double up as both a moss farm and a bone meal farm because if items flowed up this direction, they could continue along their line. And since we have crafters plus the new update is coming very shortly for Minecraft. We should be able to craft the bone meal directly into bone blocks and put them in here. Could be worth it. Hmm. Uh, let's just not pay attention to that raw mutton. Don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so the main purpose of this though was to get myself ready. Who <laughs> Swoopy. Oh, what a solid fly through that was. Uh, was to get myself ready to be able to start breeding my cows because I do need a little bit more leather. Genuinely, my whole motivation for this area was I need leather to work on my storage room down there. <laughs> so that's why we've arrived at this point. Oh, no, thank you. So we, <laughs> we have sheep. <laughs> Look at them over there. Uh, we have sheep. And they are just fine in there. Hopefully nothing escapes. The groundwork in here does seem pretty plain. I think we need to come up with an idea of how we can make it more interesting without just spamming grass, you know? I really do like the ferns. And I think a little fern farm would be lovely. Maybe we could combine that with the fact that we're making a bone meal farm. And that bone meal will provide enough to make some ferns. Maybe we make ferns in here. Yeah. Oh, hello. But we've got this little archway here. And I talked about this a little bit on the live stream that I did this in. Something that I really aim for. Wow, this episode's really just getting into my mind. More talking about the processes that I go through rather than actually achieving a major amount of progress. But one of the things that I really have found is my style, I guess, is I thrive and strive for parallax. If you don't know, I think it kind of comes from old, uh, old Disney movies and video games and stuff. But parallax is the effect of having a foreground and a background item moving at different paces. And as such, it kind of gives the illusion of scale. So for example, all of these blocks here are moving along your screen quite rapidly. They move in and out of frame within a short amount of time. But if we look at the stuff in the background, it barely looks like it's moving. There is just something so scale driven by that. There is something that our brains automatically translate that as big object, distant object. And as such, having these mountains and building in a way that kind of shows them off and makes them dip out of view and then appear again really gives this lovely sense of scale to what we're doing around here. I think what would really help with this stuff when it comes down to the more micro scale, I find it very easy to think in the macro, but this detailing stuff is stuff that I, I need to work on. I don't quite have the skill set yet. I can build mountains, but when it comes to a tiny little path, I'm a little bit stumped. So we're going to uh, we're going to continue throughout this playthrough, improving our skills and hopefully becoming a really well-rounded builder. That's my goal. Make some really cool stuff, 
make a place that I'm proud of and in the process become a good builder. Oh, we don't look in there. <laughs> yeah, things like that will help. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy but that's not to say that this isn't something to be proud of it does look good and it serves its purpose and although i'm thinking of changing up my idea for the pigs it might be nice to bring them into a more forested area i think the reality is i'm gonna leave this area for now it may be partly finished if i pop up here yeah it's really not as complete as i was hoping but it does change up the landscape a little bit. We have done stuff. <sighs> I'm not convinced about those edges, but that's fine. This is, uh, this is cool. It even varies up the view from over here. Changes things a little. And there was a really good quote that I heard recently where, paraphrasing slightly, it said something along the lines of, I can't see the way forward, but if I can see my next step, I'll just take that one. And that's... What I'm going to do. I can't see the way forward with this area, but I think I know my next step, a moss farm. And eventually, as I go about my journey, the answer might come to me and we'll be able to come back this way and fix it up. Maybe when we're building a fishery, this area will become a little bit more filled in with some stock or something interesting like that. But even if the episode is a little bit short, I think I'm going to finish it up here and say thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate you guys hanging through this episode where it's a lot more of me talking about the way I feel about building, the way I feel about my building, the processes and all the in-betweens. And I hope regardless of how I feel about it, that you enjoyed it. We'll be back with more very soon. Don't you worry, still plenty more to do. So I'm gonna say thank you very much to my Patreon supporters for your continued support. You folks are amazing genuinely means a lot and i appreciate you helping me do this full time and to everyone who's been watching i hope you all enjoyed so until the next one i hope you all take care of yourselves and i'll see you then bye bye everyone uh whoop.